everyone it's Sam Mackay from Enterprise DNA. In this tutorial, I want to show you something really cool and, and, and relatively unique. And it, and it came from a, a question, a support question in the Enterprise DNA support forum from a member. And what they wanted to do was work out what day. So for any particular day within a month, what day was it from a workday perspective and what day was it from a weekend perspective? So not super easy to do inside of Power BI, but, but it is doable and, and a solution was found um, after, after a little bit of testing. Because why, you, why would you want to even use this? Well, you, in most cases you want to compare like for like, right? Uh, because you might have more sales on a particular on work days or more sales on weekends, right? And you want to make sure um, that you're comparing from month to month or year to year or year to quarter to quarter. You want to be comparing like for like. So maybe in you know a particular month. In this case, we're looking at May. So you know this is the the north um, the North American summer, for example, and you know, the beginning of beginnings of summer. And you want to evaluate well what was our sale what could have been our, what was our sales um, you know this is what this could lead to what were our sales on the first work day of may last year now that work day might not be the second it could have been the third it could have been the first um, so it's important to be able to at least get these numbers out so that you can then evaluate or do time comparisons on a like for like basis now Time intelligence calculations aren't going to work in this case because time intelligence calculations are just going to go and evaluate. So say you wanted to compare one year versus the prior year. Well, it is going to go find the first day of the month, regardless if it's a weekend or if it's a weekday, right? And so when you find these numbers, you can derive from this or you can branch out into uh, these uh, more relevant time intelligence calculations. Uh, with a bit more advanced logic on top of this but i want to break out here how do you get these numbers because it's interesting just you know just getting these numbers just showing okay well what day of the of um of any particular month what what day is that from a workday perspective uh and a, a weekend perspective so generally going to have between 20 to 22 weekday work days or working uh, weekdays and then the number is probably going to be around eight to ten weekend days for example right so how do we do it? How do we do it? Let's have a look at the formulas. So key thing here, I've used variables. I love using variables, okay? So I um, highly, highly recommend doing so. But what the key part of this formula is this rank X down here, right? We are going to find out what day, uh, what number this these are based on its ranking, right? And what we're going to do inside of our rank X is we are going to find a table, which I've called month table here, which is going to be filtered. We're going to evaluate for every single day, um, but we're going to filter it for either weekday or weekends, right? Now, I have this particular column in my date table where I differentiate between whether it's a work weekday or it's a weekend. So what I can do is I can filter for any particular month just the weekdays right and that's the key thing that's the key thing that we need to make sure we implement now i've actually created a video um, on rank x specifically it's about rank x considerations well this is a really great that that video is a real great segue into this one because there's a serious consideration we have to make with inside this particular rank x is that we need to create this virtual table which only only shows the weekdays in the particular month context that we are that that we are in right now when we create this virtual table we put that inside of rank x and then what rank x will do is it will iterate through every single one of these days and then evaluate for every single uh day or or, or row in this virtual table the rank and in this case in this case we need it's as simple as putting the day of month inside of this table so what it's going to do is it's going to come to this particular day and it's going to and it's going to work out okay well two is the lowest number is the lowest number of this particular um of this particular virtual table um, but it is the first number because this is the first weekday the second of may is the f is the first weekday and so that is going to evaluate to the top 
or, or it's going to be the lowest, right? But we've done it in ascending here. It's going to evaluate to the lowest uh, result, and that is why it's going to return one for us. It's going to return the um, uh, the, the number one, and then we're going to come to the third day of the month, and that's going to be two. And then you'll see here that number nine in this case is going to be the sixth ranked lowest value, and so. Uh, rank X is again going to return 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, so, so on and so forth. So pretty crazy trick there, right, it's in terms of how you can use Rank X in a, in a really tricky way, in a really effective way to actually achieve this. And the same, if we, if we, if we jump over to the weekend, the weekend number, the same is going to be for the weekend logic. All I've done there is I've changed the virtual table inside of Rank X for the weekend. And then you'll see here that one, so for the first result, you'll see here one is obviously the lowest result based on this logic, so it's going to return the one. The seven is the second lowest inside this virtual table that is filtered on weekend, so it's going to evaluate to two, and so on and so forth. And then if we jump to any different month, and you'll see that this calculation is dynamic, you'll see that it re-evaluates based on any month that we dive into. I think this is pretty cool. I think this is really, 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 really cool technique. And what we could derive from here, maybe, maybe this will be a follow-up video to be honest, is let's compare sales on the first working day of November this year versus the first working day of sales last year. And um, you know, that's a, a really piece of a really good piece of interesting analysis that can't be achieved with time intelligence calculations. Um, it could only really be achieved in this particular way. And just to reiterate the point of what we've what we've done here, you know, I've also got uh, a filter here which enables me to filter weekday or weekends, and I've actually put it into a slicer. And you'll see here that this is the day of the month, but then we've got this rank X working inside this column, and it's giving us the the, the perfect one to twenty two in terms of you know just working days in that particular month. Okay, so interesting insight. Hopefully, you know, you you might have something unique like this that you're actually working through. Um, you know, and so hopefully you can um, benefit or you, you, you learned a lot during this video and you can implement this logic in your model. All the best. See ya. Hey everyone. Thanks for tuning in to Enterprise DNA TV. If you enjoyed the contents covered in this particular tutorial, please throw the video a like. It really helps us and we really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA TV channel. Uh, we have a huge amount of content coming out all the time from myself and a range of content creators, uh, all dedicated to improving the way that you use Power BI and the Power Platform. Lastly, check out Enterprise DNA's website, plenty of resources and further learning that you can access very easily. All the best, take care.